Hi, welcome back to my channel. And today I'll be showing you how I designed the BMW X5. The BMW X5 was BMW's first SUV. The car was based off the platform that BMW had acquired when it acquired Rover Group. BMW's decision was that they would love to see what a BMW Land Rover could look like. Look like, look like. So the brief was to show Dr. Reitzler what an SUV could look like, a BMW type SUV could look like in six months. So Chris responded to him by saying, sure, we'll come back to you with uh, a sketch program and uh, we'll have some sketches on the wall and we'll have a look at it and see which one best fits the, the, uh, the image of a BMW. To which Dr. Reitzler responded, no, I want to actually see a full-size uh, model. Those of us who are in design know that it's very difficult to prepare a full-size model of a car in six weeks. So Chris said there would be a couple hours in the flight where I could come up with the design. That was a bit scary, obviously, because to sit on an airplane and design a, a car in about two hours, um, it's, it's not the easiest thing, believe me. I uh, took up the challenge and come up with something that could reasonably be interpreted as, as a solution to this, uh, to this challenge. When I saw the workers, was a bit of a slack jaw moment for me because each of those three gentlemen were no less than 70 years old. And my immediate reaction to the interpreter was, are these guys really capable of working 18 hours a day, seven days a week, six straight weeks? Is that even possible? He responded, he says, don't you worry about the, uh, the talents or the working capabilities of these three gentlemen. They're the same guys who'd actually in their 20s, so in the late 60s, had actually built the Lamborghini Mira. It was almost like I was standing in front of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Rembrandt. It was that kind of awe. There was nothing really to base the look of this car off of. It was, uh, it was starting from ground zero. But I'll show you as I draw here a few of the elements that came into play to sort of give it that look that BMWs are famous for. Being a BMW, it couldn't just look like a, an off-roader. It had to have some amount of elegance because BMWs obviously weren't, weren't known for being off-road vehicles as much as a Land Rover. So to create that and, and to give it its unique look, Hofmeister Knick is a standard design feature on a BMW that is only, it's not a huge element and not very easily uh, identified immediately, but it is this movement right here in what is the D pillar, obviously, of the uh, of this car, because you have the A, the B, and typically the C, but with a larger vehicle, you have a D pillar. So this pillar here, right where it meets the belt line, we would always put a knick in it. And that just gave you a sort of a design element. It's not needed, but it does work, and it doesn't deteriorate or, 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 or hurt the, the shape of the car at all. So on the side, BMW's always had this very straight, sometimes slightly intention feature line that ran through the shoulder area. But what brought some newness and some freshness to the design of the X5 was that we had pretty much a, 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 a greenhouse that wasn't broken up, but you can sort of now start to see as I hone in on the, uh, the graphics of the greenhouse that it was very BMW-esque. In some senses, people might think this was an incredible challenge to do and to get right. In actuality, when you're starting from scratch, the design's your oyster, I guess you could almost say. You can do anything as long as it looks good and is interpreted as a product of the company you're working with. You've done the job. So when you're starting in front of this blank piece of paper with a pen in your hand and you're starting to think, what is this car actually going to look like? It's very difficult to say at that moment, you know what's gonna come off on, onto the paper out of your hand because you're, you're developing as you're sketching it. That's what the sketching phase is all about. It's, it's, it's a path of, uh, of discovery. You're, you're, you're searching for a solution. So settle for one that you really like as soon as you can and refine that idea. And again, another thing that's important is to hold the values of the company that you're working with. In other words, realize that what you're designing is belonging to that mark or to that brand. You can challenge them in such a way that they are recognizable in different proportions and different shapes, 
as long as they hold some kind of genetic link or DNA link with, with the original design. Typically, BMWs have had what we call the kidney grill and a very unique look to the front headlights. The amazing thing with this project was that we knew we had a very short time amount of time and we were only working within a space of six weeks to get this from zero to reality. To see that come to life so quickly in front of your eyes, it's an amazingly fast process and so exciting to see it to, to come to fruition in such a short amount of time. If I get this more accurate, you'll start to see that the front end that's coming out of here could really only be a BMW front. We also put in some elements here on the hood that gave it a very dynamic look in terms of air coming into the engine bay area. But yeah, I think uh, that pretty much shows you how the front end developed on the X5. Just a quick lesson in uh, front end sketch of a vehicle that had never existed before that had to be immediately uh, recognized again as having that BMW family feeling, the BMW design characteristics of the 90s, and still look fresh, innovative, and to its benefit, I think uh, a lot of people still uh, talk about the original X5 in, in, in good terms, in friendly terms, because I think it was the the stepping stone, the first building block of BMW's commitment to start building off-road vehicles or semi-off-road vehicles, let's call them SUVs or SAVs even, sport activity vehicles. But it was a real, real good start for BMW. So there you have it. That's how I uh, designed the X5. And uh, again, thanks to a, a, a large number of people that helped out on this project because as soon as it was sent back to BMW as a six-week model, uh, the acceptance was immediate from Dr. Reitzler and uh, it went straight into production uh, stages as the first ever BMW SUV. Mm -hmm.